In this Debaco University video, I'm going to go over some more of, of the specifics when you're looking at flipping your plants or transitioning them from the vegetative to the flowering cycles. All right, let's go over flipping indoor cannabis plants from the vegetative to flowering cycles. So first off, the change. When we're looking at making that change, uh, growers uh, growing photoperiod dependent or even autoflower plants need to realize their plants need to go through a shift from producing leaves to flowers. Now in autoflowers, of course, that'll happen naturally. Uh, photoperiod dependent, you have the opportunity to decide when that change occurs. So because with photoperiod dependent strains, growers have more control over when this actually happens, there needs to be a consideration for how to best prepare the plant to maximize your growing efficiency. Also, if you're using light sources that have strong red wavelengths, such as high pressure sodiums, this will increase the tendencies for plants to stretch. So just be mindful if you're in a ceiling or height limited growing situation. Now the photo period itself. Well, for photo period dependent cultivars, a simple switch from an 18 plus hours of continuous light to 12 hours of continuous light will shift uh, the plant at any age to focus on flower production and development. Autoflowers are based on the days old, uh, and the day that the plants will shift from vegetative to flying will depend on the exact strain grown. So keep in mind with those photoperiod dependent, you have the option. You could do it when they're really small, you could do it when they're really tall. Doesn't really matter to the plant. Once it's exposed to that 12 hours, it's going to go through and produce those development of those flowers. As growers, we need to be mindful of how our plants look so we can maximize the efficiency. Now, light limitations with the photoperiod dependent. Photoperiod dependent strains will only allow growers to provide it with 12 hours of light. Should be the maximum light intensity in supplementing with carbon dioxide so their plants use high light intensity since the duration will no longer be the 12 hours per day. Why is that light intensity important? Well, the goal is to try to maintain a high DLI, which stands for daily light integral. So because you're reducing the duration of light, because you're limited by how much, increasing the intensity is advised. Now, to allow plants to utilize that higher intensity, sampling with carbon dioxide enrichment for indoor locations, it will allow plants to utilize a greater percentage or intensity of light. Now, when we're looking at photoperiod independence, such as autoflowers, what do we do with those if we're choosing to grow those plants? However, the advantage of autoflowers being photoperiod independent is that they can handle longer durations of light to help maximize light, which is important considerations for growers since the days of plant production are limited. What does that mean? Well, since it doesn't matter kind of what you expose them to for light, uh, running them, uh, running lights longer for autoflowers can help increase productivity because you're giving them a better chance to go through and produce those necessary sugars and cannabinoids. However, while the cost of running lights and potential cooling should also be factored in because running plants for 20 hours at high intensity with carbon dioxide can help maximize the harvest from these plants because this will maximize the DLI, the daily light integral that those plants receive. But if you are increasing the intensity, keep in mind uh, there's only so much plants can use under ambient carbon dioxide levels, so enriching that environment will increase the intensity that they can utilize. Now, as I mentioned, ceiling height is an important consideration. So if your grow space is ceiling height limited, this can impact when the flip is made for photoperiod dependence and or the pruning style you use for autoflowers. Remember that just because plants are in flower development uh, mode doesn't mean that they will stop growing in vertical height. They still will continue to grow in height, while not as much as is in the vegetative stage. If you are growing a sativa dominant strain, this will stretch more than an indica dominant uh, in morphology, regardless of the increase in height, can be around 50%. So just keep that in mind. Just because they stop, they're going to continue to grow. Uh, this is important when considering the distance plants should be kept from lights you're using. Uh, overall, this height limitation tends to be more of an issue for smaller grow tents than actual grow rooms. But just because the ceiling is high doesn't mean you have to also consider where the lights are hanging as well. Now plant age, so with autoflowers, plant age determines the transition point. For photoperiod dependent, uh, growers may decide to make the change in the photoperiod based on the plant's age, again, to maximize productivity and efficiency of their grow operation. The best age is dependent on many factors, such as pruning style, uh, physical space of the growing area, and physical space of the growing area. However, a general starting point is to flip plants into flower when they have reached about half their total height you want them to reach, just as a heads up. 
Now looking at up-potting plants, so this is another important part of the process, many growers take the time around flipping their plants to change their containers or up-pot their plants. This is typically a good idea, however be sure not to plan everything on the same day. It might be great for the grower, not so great for the plants. Idea the plants should be up-potted and then growers should wait about three days before altering the photo period to induce flowering, simply to reduce the stress that's going on the plant. After the potting process, that's going to be a stress on the plant. And if you flip it the same day, that could be too much and could stunt the plant potentially. So what you're planning for this stretch, this kind of gives you just a little bit of a kind of an image here uh, as an example. In this case, the, plant, the tent height is seven feet or 84 inches, as we see right here. The top of the tent to the bottom of the lights is 21 inches. So if we're looking basically right here with 16 inch spacing between the plants and lights required to give a total of 63 inches of grow space remaining. And that is located basically right here. So the container is 13 inches tall, resulting in a total of 50 inches of equipment height space being taken up. So just because you have this total height of the grow tent, you also have to consider the distance your lights are hanging from the top, and the distance the soil line is up from the bottom. So this limits uh, 34 inches of plant height in the growing space. So when plants reach 50% of possible growing space, in this case 17 inches, the flowering photo period should be initiated, at least as a good starting point. So here we're thinking, oh, seven feet, 84 inches, plenty of growing space. Well, really, when it comes to actual plant space, you only have about 34 inches. So again, take all these factors into consideration so you don't get caught uh, with your plants running into the lights or having to do something um, that's not gonna be very plant conducive. Take into consideration the actual growing height, initiate that flowering halfway through, and that should offer you a very good starting point for your plants to determine when you should flip them from the vegetative photo period to the flowering one.